Hello there. Welcome back to the Steel City Sports Podcast. Today we're going to be continuing our NBA postseason coverage. Today's matchup, we have the 4-5 in the Eastern Conference. Cleveland Cavaliers versus the New York Knicks. The thing that I find fascinating about this series is the only NBA game I've ever been to was the Cleveland Cavaliers versus the New York Knicks. In Cleveland, it was earlier this year in October. I think it was October 30th, the day before Halloween. And... uh, the Cavs won that game. They had like a great comeback in the fourth quarter. So I just find that kind of interesting. The only game I've been to is a playoff series now. Um, so we're going to go through the the usual format where we break down the starting lineups, the coach, the records, all that stuff. And then obviously at the end, give my prediction for the outcome of this series. So looking at the point guards, I think that you can make a genuine case for either point guard in this one. You have Darius Garland versus... Um, Jalen Brunson, and I think, I really think this is a coin toss just because of how great a year Jalen Brunson has had. Ultimately, I'm going to go with Darius Garland. I just think he's been doing it a little longer as a you know explosive uh, scoring option. And Jalen Brunson, I feel like he's more of a game manager. Not to say that he can't explode and take over games offensively. He definitely can do that. I just, I think Garland, I have a little more faith in as just a pure scorer, but as a distributor, I'd probably take Bronson overall. Garland by a hair. A very, very small margin there. Uh, at the two position, Donovan Mitchell versus Quentin Grimes. Now, I get these starting lineups from ESPN. I don't know if Quentin Grimes is really going to be starting in this series. Um, I would think Josh Hart would be the, would make a little more sense to start here. But according to ESPN, Quentin Grimes is the starting shooting guard. So, yeah, uh, really... I know Quentin Grimes is a nice young piece up and coming, but Donovan Mitchell is a top 15 player in the NBA right now. He's an absolute stud, all-NBA player this year. Um, So that one's not really that even close. Next, we have the small forward matchup of Isaac Okoro versus R.J. Barrett. And this one is, I think, pretty comfortably R.J. I think R.J. has kind of disappointed me a little. I thought he would be all-star caliber at this point in his career. He's kind of... I'd say a tier below that. Still a good player, still above average player, but um, he can be streaky. And I don't think they sometimes use him as the as they should in uh, New York. I think there's a lot of times where RJ's just kind of standing in the corner, which I don't like. I think he could really create his own shot if given the opportunity. Uh, Okoro is a nice defensive piece. That's really all Okoro does on the floor. I mean, occasionally he'll hit a three, but... He's really on the floor for defensive purposes. I think RJ, obviously, just a much more complete, better all-around player. So he gets the nod there. Next, we have the power forward matchup of Evan Mobley versus Julius Randle. Uh, This one is, again, another close one. I think as of right now, Julius Randle is the better player. Uh, I definitely think Evan Mobley has the higher upside, of course. But at this point in 2023, Julius Randle is a better basketball player than Evan Mobley. Much more polished offensive player. Has a better... Uh, outside shot than Evan Mobley does, and he was an all-star this year. Evan Mobley, of course, was not. And then we have our center matchup, Jared Allen versus uh, Mitchell Robinson. Very similar players, very tall, athletic, rim-running shot blockers. I just think Jared Allen does it at a higher level, so I'm going to give him the nod. That means the Cavs' starting lineup gets a 3-2 advantage. Uh, Looking at their benches... So the Cavs are going with a nine-man rotation. They have Rubio, Lavert, Lamar Stevens, and Jetty Osman uh, for their bench. And then the New York Knicks are running a five-man with Emmanuel Quickly, Josh Hart, Evan Fournier, Obi Toppin, and Jericho Sims. Um, this is, I think, a close one again, but I'm ultimately going to go with the Knicks bench. I like their depth better than the Cavs. Um, I like Josh Hart. He's very much a Swiss Army Knife type of care, uh, player, which I, I tend to uh, favor those types of players. Uh, Emmanuel Quickly is probably going to win Sixth Man of the Year, and I cannot believe that <laughs> if you watched my NBA Awards video, you might have picked up on the fact that I completely just forgot about doing the Sixth Man of the Year. There's no Sixth Man in that video, which I just realized earlier today. But Emmanuel Quickly, I heard, is probably going to be winning that award, so... You have him on your bench. I like Obi Toppin still. Uh, and then with the Cleveland's bench, Rubio's coming back off injury. Karras is very much the definition of streak. He, he's hit or miss. He could have 50 or he could have two. And that happened earlier this year where he had like 50-something against Boston. 
Then the next game, I think he literally had one point. So he's he's too inconsistent for me. Looking at their coaches, J.B. Bickerstaff versus Tom Thibodeau. I'm not really a big Thibs, Thibs fan, honestly. Um, but just for experience alone, I'll give him the nod, the slight nod here because he's been coaching playoff teams for forever now. I mean, he's always getting the playoffs. He always tends to keep the same sort of system as players play really physical, very tough, high minutes for the Stars. Um, and JB, I just think he he's still kind of establishing himself. I think this is his second year as the Cavs head coach, so um, this could go a long way in cementing him as a good head coach if he gets the win in this series. And then, of course, their records, Cleveland 51-31. and 31. The Knicks have 47-35 and 35 as their record. Cavs won seven of their last ten. The Knicks won the uh, five of their last ten. So, what does all this mean? Who do I have winning this series? Uh, ultimately, I think Cleveland will win this series. Now, it's just a matter of how many games. I think just from a talent perspective, the Cavaliers are a much more talented team in their starting lineup. Um, Donovan Mitchell uh, can take over any given name or any given game. Sorry, and like I said. He's probably a top 15 player in the NBA. The Knicks have nowhere near that level of uh, shot creation. Uh, Donald Mitchell is live to score 50 any given night. You still have Garland on the team who can do the same exact thing, and then you have that monstrous uh, front court with Allen and Mobley who could just rebound the hell out of the ball. Um, so you look back to New York's last playoff appearance in 2021, the first round they played Atlanta. They lost in five games to Atlanta. And I looked a lot back to that because this Cavs team is kind of similar to the Hawks team. Not exactly, but there are some parallels to, to the teams. And uh, ultimately, I ended up going with Cavs in six because it's not going to be five because Randall now has more help than he had in that series. You know, he was not uh, accustomed to being like a, a number one option in a playoff series. That was his first playoffs in 2021. Now he's back and he has some help. Jalen Brunson is going to take a lot of offensive pressure off of Julius Randle, which is why I think they're going to win one more game than they did in the Atlanta series. So my final prediction for this series is Cavs win in six games and move on. So then that's been my uh, breakdown for this matchup. You guys let me know what you think of it down below. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe.